killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He doesn't act on impulse, but plans his crimes in a very meticulous fashion. He doesn't have anything personal against the victims. That's why he covers their faces with mud, to make them anonymous. Why does he kill them if he doesn't have anything against them? For him, they're more of an image, a symbol. That's probably why he gives them an origami figure and an orchid as gifts to apologize for what he's done to them. Very interesting. And where does all that get us? The best way of tracking a predator is to be familiar with his behavior. That may be true in novels, but there's a child's life at stake here. Continue, Jaden. Then I studied the geographical distribution of the murders. Generally, a killer commits his first murder near to where he lives, so he has a safe place to flee to if any complications arise. The more confident he becomes, the further he roams from his base. By analyzing the locations where the victims disappeared, I was able to isolate a zone where the killer might live. And what size is this, uh, zone? For the moment, about 10 square miles. Ah, oh, great. There must be 10,000 people live in that sort of area. You gonna question them one by one? It may not give us the address of the killer, but at least it's something to go on. Blake, if you've got a better plan, I'm willing to listen. Don't be shy. I'm all ears. One detail attracted my attention. The interval between the time when a victim disappears and the time when the body is found ranges from three to five days. But the rainfall is always at six inches, give or take 10%. What on earth does that mean? All the victims were drowned in rainwater. The killer kills only in the fall when there is plenty of rain. It could be that he puts them in some sort of well or tank that is open to the skies and that fills up with rainwater. The more it rains, the less time the victim has to live. So what's next? There are two suspects whose psychological profile might fit and can be connected to the comfort zone. I'd like to question them. Ah, damn it. We're wasting our time with this bullshit. The killer's out there somewhere, we gotta get off our asses and find him. Blake, I've had just about enough of your shit. You've been chasing this guy for what, two years? And what are you caught, huh? Nothing! Absolutely fucking lootly nothing! Well, you think you can do a better fucking job than me with your psychology degree and your great glasses? Well, let me tell you something, pal. That don't mean zip when it comes to getting out there. You're just a fucking bureaucrat. Your vast experience hasn't prevented eight victims from being murdered. Fucking asshole! That's enough. You said it took six inches of rainfall before the victim died. How much time do we have left? If the weather forecasts are right, less than 72 hours. Sir, we waste our time coming here. Maybe we should have a little look inside anyway. There's nobody home. There is now. I'm not sure that's entirely legal. Call the cops. Looks like Nathaniel Williams is a pretty religious guy. He's a God-fearing idiot, waiting for the end of the world. We questioned him a few months back because he was causing a disturbance in the park. He was ranting and raving. Said he heard voices. Had this idea in his sick little head that I was the Antichrist. I'd come to Earth to persecute him. Real twisted. It's stifling in here. 
Those windows haven't been opened in years. Well, no warrant, no problem for Blake. He thinks his badge entitles him to do whatever he wants. All the signs of a mystical obsessive neurosis compounded by a persecution complex. The guys taking a break from reality hold up here in this crazy apartment. Nathaniel Williams is our prime suspect. He's already been questioned, and he lives in the exact geoprofiling zone. You don't have to be a profiler to see he's not a killer. We're wasting our time here. Good timing, Nathaniel. Just the man we're looking for. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. I'm Agent Norman Jaden, FBI. I'd like to ask you a few questions. As God is my witness, I haven't done anything. I'm innocent. Relax. Nobody's accusing you of anything. We just want to talk. Nathaniel, do you remember where you were last Tuesday at 4.30 p.m.? Here? I was here. I was praying. All day. Was there anybody with you? No. No, I was alone. Where do you work, Nathaniel? Do you have a job? My sole occupation is praying to the all-merciful Lord for the salvation of humanity. Why all the crucifixes? You afraid of something? The hour is nigh, and the wrath of God shall strike men down. I'm preparing for the end of the world. What about the voices, Nathaniel? Do you still hear the voices? We know who talks to you, don't we, Nathaniel? Or we both know who talks to you. Don't speak that name. Better just stand down and leave Blake to it. What does he say to you, Nathaniel? I guess Blake's trying to break him, but what good is a confession if he does? Let's talk about it. He orders you to go and find new prey, doesn't he? I gotta stop Blake, he he's going too more far. And more. The guy is terrified of Blake. He really thinks he's the Antichrist or oh, something. You mustn't mention him. You'll bring him here. He told Blake, you to go and find that kid doing? in the park. The voice is tormented you all night long. Shit! Blake to is totally out of his mind. Man. I can't just stand around and do nothing. Stop! Stop! That's I've got to do something. 
so you obey them. To Maybe make Blake them knows what he's doing after all. That's around him. Leave him right. alone. No! Cart of shit! Stop! Get out of your mind! Stop! You killed them, didn't you, Nathaniel? Are you gonna confess, you bastard? You are the Antichrist. Put down the gun, I Nathaniel. I shall you to your father in hell. He is the son of Satan. He was sent to earth to destroy shoot, us. For Christ's sakes, shoot! Drop the gun, now! Gently put the gun down on the floor. Team, you shall regret confronting the emissary of the Lord. You shall know divine power. I'm here to help you, Nathaniel, to get rid of the voices in your head, but you have to trust me. Christ, all powerful. Defend us in our battle with the forces of evil. Protect us from the cunning and wiles of the demon. May God Almighty manifest the power of his empire. And may divine power cast Satan and all the other spirits that prowl the world in search of souls into the darkest depths of hell. Keep calm. Everything is going to be fine, Nathaniel. Back away, slowly. Drop the gun. Drop it, Nathaniel. Put your hands on your head. Turn around. Motherfucker! In the name of the Lord. I exorcise thee, Satan. Okay, freak, the show's over. You're under arrest. Pretty damn cool under the circumstances. I would have just shot him. A gun isn't the answer to every problem, Blake. <laughs> Maybe not, but most of the time it helps. As we're free for the moment, you love it. Not all in hand in my pocket, just in case. Susan Bowles, mother of the origami killer's latest victim. Maybe she knows something about the circumstances surrounding her son's death. Mrs. Bowles. Anybody home? A letter on the floor. Maybe I should have a look. Hmm. I don't know why, but I got a bad feeling about this. Doesn't seem to be anyone. A letter on the floor. Maybe I should have a look. Jeez. Parents today. Going out and leaving a poor little kid like that. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> Wait a minute. 
Come on, I have to search the house. Maybe it's not too late. This letter. Holy fuck. I hope she... I hope she hasn't... Are you there? Get her under the bed, then I'll call for help. She's lost a load of blood. Lucky I happened to be on the scene. I'm gonna call an ambulance. No, I... I don't want to go to the hospital. Please. Okay. You got something around here I can dress this one with? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Don't move. I'll be right back. Quick, she's losing blood. I gotta hurry. She should have some bandages in the bathroom. She should have some bandages in the bathroom. Mm. Need some bandages and disinfectant. Gotta be here somewhere. Let's see. I need this, and this, and this. I'm here for you, Susan. You'll be all right. I'll take care of you. Oh, I need more. It's still bleeding. Stay with me, Susan. Susan, do you hear me? Susan, stay with me. Can you hear me? Stay. Not perfect. That'll do. There, I done what I can. That should stop the bleeding. Luckily, the wounds aren't too deep. Hey, how are you feeling? You okay? My baby. My baby needs me. Right. You stay there. I'll take care of the baby. Okay? Do you know what to do? With a baby, I mean. I'm a private eye. There's nothing I can't do. <laughs> I was... Her name is Emily. Gotcha. Mommy will live for now. Let's see how Junior's doing. Hi there, Emily. So, what seems to be the problem, huh? Oh! Going by the smell? I got a pretty good idea. Oh! 
Okay. How do you do this again? There you go, fresh new baby. That should feel better. Right, Emily? Hmm? Hey, what's the matter? I thought we solved the problem. Doesn't look ill. Why is she crying? I'll ask Susan. She'll know what to do. Susan, uh, I changed her diaper, but she's still crying. She's hungry. There's a bottle in, in the kitchen. Gotcha. The baby's bottle. Susan said it was in the kitchen. I guess I better warm this thing up. Just tilt this ball a little bit so you don't choke. Oh, good job, Emily. Hmm? You're feeling good now, right? <laughs> now, I'm gonna rock you very gently so you can have a nice little snooze. Right, that's about the limit of my maternal powers. Poor kid. Life ain't gonna be easy for her. Thanks for looking after my baby. I didn't want to leave her. I just couldn't cope anymore. Having Jeremy around. He was such a good boy. I can't understand why anyone would want to hurt him. Do you take care of this baby on your own? Doesn't Jeremy's father live with you anymore? He disappeared. The day after Jeremy. I don't know what happened to him. Maybe, maybe he couldn't take it. Ever since I've had to look after Emily all on my own and I couldn't do it anymore. I understand. Did your husband say anything before he disappeared? Did he leave a note or something? 
No. He left the house without a word and... There was just the cell phone. A cell phone? Yeah, I, I found a cell phone in his dresser. I'm sure it wasn't his. I'd never seen it before. I tried to turn it on, but it didn't work. Do you still have it? Yeah, it's, um, it's in a drawer in the living room. You can have it if you'd like. I'm sure it's of more use to you than to me. Do you have any family or anybody to help you? Yeah, my mother. I didn't want to ask her for anything. We don't really get along. But I guess I'm out of options. Well, look after yourself. And Emily. I will. I promise. In a drawer in the living room. That's what Susan said. Good luck, Emily. You take care of your mom.